In one of my last videos, we discussed seven teams that gave up on hopeful players that eventually turned into NHL stars. And in that video, I discussed a situational taboo that stems from trading away a potential star player. And it connected to the what if conundrum. As in, what if this young player that we trade eventually turns into an NHL superstar? Well, this theory directly applies to the exchange of draft picks. What if this first round pick I trade eventually turns into a star player? And this what if conundrum still strongly exists today. In fact, teams still heavily emphasize the importance of keeping their draft picks and they definitely do acknowledge the detrimental effect that may occur if you constantly trade away draft picks. In this graph, we see the amount of first round picks that are considered elite NHL players since 2010. And do keep in mind that recent drafts will skew the number of players. And so when we look at this graph, the results are definitely not significant. And there is a very low chance that a first round pick turns into a star player in the NHL. And we only really consider around 76 of these players to be elite, meaning that there's only a 27% chance of drafting an elite player in the first round. And this doesn't even take into consideration the significance of a top 10 pick versus the rest of the draft. And more times than not, when a first round pick is traded, it is in the later half of a draft. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at seven traded draft picks that eventually turned into NHL stars. Also guys, on a side note, let me know if you enjoy these introductions, these stat lines, these graphs down below. I have gotten a few of these comments that are like skipped to this time frame for the actual real start of the video. But personally, I really like going over these analytics, these stat lines. Um, personally, I really enjoy it. So I guess let me know what you guys think about, you know, going over these graphs and, you know, examples of past history down below. And also guys, we just hit 5,000 subscribers again. Your guys' support has just been crazy. My goal for all of 2020 was to hit 5,000 subscribers and we did it in 28 days. So thank you guys for all the support. You guys are just crazy. We will start with the notorious Phil Kessel trade to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Phil Kessel was originally the fifth overall pick from the 2006 NHL Draft. And Kessel was a prolific scorer in the NCAA and developed very well in the Boston Bruins system. And in the 2008-2009 season, Phil Kessel broke out putting up 36 goals, 60 points, and 70 games. And then in the fall of 2009, he was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a 2010 first and second round pick, and then a 2011 first round pick. And at the time of this trade, the Toronto Maple Leafs were kind of a bubble team. You know, they had a lot of aging veterans, but they had the potential to make a playoff push. And at this time, Brian Burke felt as if, you know, acquiring a guy like Phil Kessel, an already proven building a block player, was really going to help the Toronto Maple Leafs rebuild. And in Brian Burke's defense, Kessel was a young, extremely talented goal scorer who did live up to his goal scoring nature in Toronto as he had many very productive seasons. However, what Brian Burke would not predict is that in the 2009-2010 season, the Toronto Maple Leafs would end up second last in the entire NHL. And of course, this pick turned out to be Tyler Sagan, a prolific goal scorer who's turned into an NHL superstar throughout his entire career. Now, one for one, Tyler Sagan for Phil Kessel is kind of a, I guess, understandable deal. I think, I think most people would be like, okay, that's a fair deal. However, the 2011 first round pick would turn out to be Dougie Hamilton. And Dougie Hamilton is currently considered a Norris quality defenseman in the NHL. He's been fantastic throughout his entire career and has really broken out this season. And this is a prime example of the risk and reward of trading a future first round pick. Next, we have a very interesting trade. In one of my last videos, I actually highlighted how the Chicago Blackhawks traded Tebow Terabinen as a part of a cap dump. And of course, Terabinen would eventually develop into an NHL superstar. But one thing I did fail to realize was who the Blackhawks drafted with one of those second round picks that they received in compensation. And with the 39th pick in 2016, they drafted Alex Debrinkit. Now, this really does turn the tables on this transaction. Tebow Terabinen today in my opinion, is more of a valuable player. I, I would say to bring it as a higher upside, but today, Terry Vinan would be my guy. But when you take into consideration that the Blackhawks drafted one of the top players in the entire 2016 NHL draft with that pick, it definitely really does change your perspective on this situation. Terry Vinan today is an elite scoring winger who's been developing extremely well in the Hurricane system. And to break it, who is three years younger, is also an elite scoring winger who has tremendous goal scoring upside. So this is a situation where the Blackhawks really hit a home run on a situation where they could have looked very foolish. Next, we had the Edmonton Oilers and they traded their 2015 first and second round pick for Griffin Reinhardt. Griffin Reinhardt, the fourth overall pick from 2012, so of course the Yakubov draft. And Reinhardt was drafted as a very complete defensively sound defenseman. He was large, he had a good transition game, and he's mostly known for his shutdown ability. However, through the next three seasons, scouts were getting very concerned with Reinhardt's development. He was progressing his game, but nowhere near his fourth overall pick status, and many scouts noted his steep regression in his offensive game. 
I start with the past, a defenseman of Reinhardt's pedigree who already had great shutdown ability should be showing some, you know, really good progression in his offensive side of the game. However, Reinhardt went the opposite way, having worse and worse production in the next two seasons in the WHL. I will say though, in the 2014-2015 season, Reinhardt played the majority of his time with the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, and he did show pretty good development. You know, his offensive game was getting better, and he was, you know, definitely showing some positive signs. And then it happened. On June 26, 2015, the Edmonton Oilers gave up their 16th overall pick and a second round pick for Griffin Reinhardt. And of course, that 16th overall pick turned out to be Matt Barzell. And today, Matt Barzell is a superstar. He won the Calder and is a dynamic offensive force, who, in my opinion, would be probably a consistent 80 to 90 point player if he did have, you know, that more offensive system. And to give the benefit of the doubt to the Oilers, the rationale was that they were already ridiculed for not drafting defensemen as they were routinely drafting just forwards. And Griffin Reiner, who was already three years out of his draft year, was, you know, he was more considered NHL ready than drafting a defenseman in 2015. But the fact that many scouts were already really concerned about his development and that there was already red flags, you know, his trajectory really wasn't where it should have been, his progress really wasn't where it should have been. And what made even less sense is that Reinhardt actually played for the Edmonton Oil Kings, so he did play in Edmonton, so the Oilers had every single opportunity to scout him hundreds of times. So I don't really understand Edmonton's just, you know, commitment to Reinhardt when he was already showing very concerning development. And of course the 2015 NHL draft has been one of the best drafts we've seen in NHL history. Next, we have another very interesting case. The Toronto Maple Leafs traded their 30th overall pick and the 39th overall pick. This is a tongue twister, guys. I've, said, I've tried doing this like 10 times now. <laughs> For the 22nd overall pick in the 2011 draft to the Anaheim Ducks. Now, the rationale of this trade is pretty straightforward and it's something that we see in almost every single draft. When a team is high on a particular player, they will commonly trade up to try drafting that guy. And seeing a first and second bundle to trade up is very common. In fact, most teams actually have a calculation on a kind of what draft picks they're willing to give up to trade up. However, unfortunately for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they would strike out bigs time. Wink wink. As the Ducks ended up drafting two foundational pieces to their team, and with the 22nd overall pick the Leafs acquired, they drafted Tyler Biggs. Tyler Biggs heading into the 2012 NHL Draft was regarded as a physical winger who had some scoring upside. As many scouts considered him to be a power forward, who had decent but just not really overwhelming production. And throughout the next four seasons, Tyler would bounce around many leagues and would struggle to produce in every single one of those leagues. And today, Tyler Biggs has yet to play a single game in the NHL. And as for the Anaheim Ducks, with the 30th pick, they drafted Ricard Raquel. And Raquel has developed into a very good top six forward. He definitely did have a slower development curve, but today he is a feisty goal scoring winger. In 2018, Raquel actually put up 34 goals, 69 points, and is still a major piece on the Ducks. And the cherry on top is with the 39th pick in this draft, the Ducks drafted their franchise goalie in John Gibson. And Gibson has developed into a lead starting goaltender who has consistently been putting on Vezna performances. And do keep in mind that if a team does trade their draft picks, in no means are they going to draft the same player as the other team, but this transaction was just crazy. Next, with the Vancouver Canucks trading Corey Schneider to the New Jersey Devils for the ninth overall pick. Schneider during this trade was an elite starting goaltender. He was a star in Vancouver and went to Jersey and actually had three very good seasons. After that though, Schneider would experience a very fast and steep regression in his career as he's currently playing in the minors, putting up under average numbers. And as for the ninth overall pick, the Vancouver Canucks used it to select Bo Horvat. And Bo Horvat today is the captain of the Vancouver Canucks. He's a shutdown centerman who's been developing a very impressive offensive game with 44 points, 51 games this season. Again, in a shutdown role to make it even more impressive. And Bo is just a terrific two-way player who's leading the future of this young Canucks team. And funny enough, when this trade did occur, the Canucks were definitely getting heavily ridiculed for it. And as a Canucks fan, I was happy, as the Canucks for many years traded away all the draft picks. And this trade signified the future, when the Canucks were a team full of veterans, but today, the Canucks are clearly on top of this trade. Next, with the notorious Matt Duchesne saga. Matt Duchesne was a part of a very interesting three-way trade. As the Colorado Avalanche had a heyday, they received Shane Bowers, a previous first round pick, Andrew Haven, a first and third round pick, and from the Nashville Predators, they actually received Samuel Girard, Kamenev, and a third round pick just for Matt Duchesne. What, what type of return is that? So the Colorado Avalanche received so many assets in what was seen as kind of a bizarre transaction. And the cherry on top for the Colorado Avalanche is that Ottawa picked actually turned out to be the fourth overall pick in the 2019 NHL Draft, where the Avs jumped on Bowen Byram. And Byram is an elite defensive prospect who has so much potential, especially playing alongside of Kale McCarr. And so this is yet another prime example of the risk of trading away a first round pick in the future, especially when it's not protected. And last, we have Jeff Carter traded to the Flyers for Jacob Voracek and a 2011 first round pick. 
And this trade was very interesting at the time. Jeff Carter was a number one goal scoring centerman who was extremely valuable. And because of this, the Blue Jackets definitely paid head over heels to obtain that number one centerman. But the interesting part of this trade is the Blue Jackets committed to Carter, but Carter did not commit to the Blue Jackets. After only 39 games, Carter was shipped to the LA Kings for Jack Jones, and I mean Jack Jones did have a decent career at Columbus, but definitely not the value worth that they traded with Voracek in that first round pick. And Voracek at the time was already developing extremely well and was regarded as a high-end winger. And Voracek, of course, has developed into a cornerstone player for the Flyers and has had some seriously dominant seasons being regarded as a top winger in the NHL at times. But as for the 2011 first round pick, it turned out to be the 8th overall pick and the Flyers jumped on Sean Couturier. And Sean Couturier today has developed into a superstar at the NHL level. And the more you look into his career and just development path, Couturier is definitely a very underappreciated player. He had back-to-back 76-point -back seasons as a premier two-way centerman who's consistently among Selkie talk. And this is definitely a very weird situation where the Blue Jackets put all the chips on the table to acquire Carter for a guy in Carter who didn't even want to be part of their organization. And so the Blue Jackets lost on a premier scoring winger and a top center in the entire NHL. The trade of draft picks will always be considered a taboo, even if the odds are really just stacked against them. And even though that team that traded that pick most likely doesn't draft the same player, it's definitely very interesting to analyze and just recapture the chain of events that can occur when a team acquires draft picks. Anyways guys, comment down below if your team has ever traded away a draft pick that turned out to be a star. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys' support has just been amazing. I feel like I'm really just beating this topic over and over again, but I, I can't really explain it any other way. The support on this channel has been insane. Anyways guys, have a great day. See you guys later.